Here in front of me, I've got the Aorus X9. The thinnest, lightest, most powerful, and perhaps most RGB 1070 SLI laptop ever. As for whether anyone was actually asking for an RGB 1070 SLI laptop, But maybe this is one of those things that we didn't know we wanted until we had one. Or maybe it isn't. The only thing I know for sure is that Sennheiser gives you the best. Their PXC 550 wireless headphones feature up to 30 hours of battery life, noise guard, hybrid adaptive noise cancellation, and more. Learn more at the link below. Consider the Lamborghini Veneno. It's not everyone's favorite Lamborghini aesthetically, but like, it's still a Lambo. And the styling of the Aorus X9 is similarly polarizing. <laughs> Other than the muted black exterior, it's one of the most gamery looking laptops that's been through the lab in a while, meaning that it'll definitely turn heads at your next LAN event, but showing up to a meeting with this would be about like showing up to a hockey game in a wetsuit. Some kinds of head turning aren't necessarily positive. I do have to give it points for build quality though. The aluminum around the keyboard and the chassis itself are both extremely rigid and at 7.9 pounds. It's not the easiest thing to carry, but it's not unreasonable given its power and it makes it so that it's not gonna move around accidentally on your desk. Plus, it's got enough I.O. on it to make it look like the flying spaghetti monster if you actually plug everything in. That's something you can't take for granted these days. And this over-the-top build philosophy makes its way to the internals as well. Our model sports a Core i7-7820HK, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, two 512 gig NVMe SSDs, not configured in RAID on our model, curiously, and two GTX 1070 GPUs. This is a really unusual graphics configuration. The disadvantage is you've got to deal with the usual performance scaling and power issues that are associated with SLI. The potential Woo! advantage is higher frame rates than a GTX 1080, currently the best performing single mobile GPU in supported games and then maybe the ability to spread out your heat generating components to make it thinner? On the subject of heat generating components, the i7-7820HK CPU is notorious for overloading the thermals of basically every laptop that we've tested it in, even that water-cooled one from ASUS. So then, has Gigabyte's four fan design been able to tame the beast? At stock clocks, actually yes. I mean, it's a thin and light, for what it is, notebook, so it wasn't particularly quiet, but it also doesn't have an annoying tone to the sound, and the CPU maxed out at around 75 degrees while maintaining 3.5 gigahertz turbo on all four cores. This is a great result. Let's move on to gaming performance. This one is a bit of a mixed bag, since the year is now 2017, and SLI scaling is as inconsistent as it's ever been. At its best, the Aorus X9 with its two 8 gig GTX 1070s destroys a desktop with a 1080. But at its worst, it actually gets beaten by a Max-Q GTX 1070 in a laptop a quarter its weight due to SLI driver nonsense. And yes, we double checked that result. So this is kind of disappointing for prospective buyers, but it's also expected. And without giving away too much about our conclusion for this video, it reinforces our belief that a single better GPU is in the vast majority of cases, a better option than two lesser ones, even at 4K resolution. Though that's nothing against the X9's display. It's got a matte finish, it comes with X-Rite Pantone calibration out of the box and looks really good. Though with that said, I would personally have gone for the 1440p 120Hz version, which is a WVA rather than an IPS display, but would deliver a much smoother gaming experience without, again, this is my opinion, giving up anything meaningful in terms of image sharpness. I'm really glad that Gigabyte has that option. 
Now the keyboard has custom mechanical switches with a long travel, but I can't say that I really enjoy typing on them. The tactile bump feels more like a tactile hitch, which means that unless you press pretty hard naturally, you might find yourself missing keystrokes from time to time. I personally wish that they had stuck to something more like what is on the Aero 15X. That one is a much better keyboard for both typing and gaming, in my opinion. The good news though, is that the quality of the trackpad is similar here, and you get a bonus Falcon graphic on it. It has solid tracking and a tactile feel in the click, even though it does seem a bit small given the size of the rest of the laptop. Flipping the X9 over to open it up, I will admit that the way that they made a bird out of the vents looks pretty darn slick, whatever I might've said aesthetically earlier, and then that taking it off reveals a completely free two and a half inch drive bay, two empty sodium slots, two filled M.2 slots, a very generous application of thermal compound, and a very high capacity 94.2 watt hour battery that would give you great battery life on a less power hungry machine. As for the X9, well, let's just say it's a gaming laptop. So those LEDs under the logo, well, you can set them to things like fan speed or CPU or GPU temps, but you should probably use them to monitor the battery. The webcam is pretty good and it includes a feature called Smart Cam, which allows you to remove the background while you're streaming. Like this guy from the reviewer's guide. And you can tell he's really pumped on Smart Cam. And the speakers, though this is somewhat predictable on a larger machine, sounded pretty darn good. So it's not bad, it's just a little misconfigured. The X9 as it is next to me here costs 3,800 US dollars. And with a lower resolution and higher refresh rate display, maybe a 1080, um, a single SSD to save a buck, and then maybe we could drop some of the RAM, it might still fall behind the ASUS G701VI in terms of its bang for the buck but it would be thinner and much sexier than that one with a more sensible display. As it is, unless you only play a couple of games that you know are super well optimized for SLI and you value resolution over refresh rate, the Aorus X9 doesn't make the most sense. But what might make sense for you is checking out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 17,000 classes in design, photos, and more. And their premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields. So you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. They've got great classes on things including video editing, writing, and technology. And Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month, and the first 200 people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months for free to try it out. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked, hit that button. But if you liked the video, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. And while you're down there, you can check out our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum.